So after all these weeks, I finally have a package. That is to say, a package in the mail with a whole bunch of really cool stuff in it. What's that, Linus? Bubble wrap? No, this is my follow-up for the Silverstone Design a New Headphone Stand for Linus competition. So I have, I believe it is 13. 3D printed headphone stands designs from members of the Linus Tech Tips community to try out today and declare a winner that Silverstone will be using their manufacturing prowess to turn into a finished product of this quality. So uh, I am really looking forward to this. Let's see how it goes. So you guys probably know Cable Mod Cables. We featured them in a lot of our build guides and build logs. Well, hey, now they have support for Corsair RMI and RMX series power supplies. Check out the link in the video description to check that out. Ooh, that one's cool. So while I'm finishing unwrapping these, I'll give you guys a little bit of the uh, history of the journey of how these 3D printed headphone stands got to be here. We received literally hundreds of submissions. And I'm talking even if you exclude the penis shaped ones for this design contest, some of which were excellent, some of which were not as excellent, but the ones that you see here before you are the cream of the crop. So my mini factory, that's actually their contribution to this whole thing, 3D printed every single design that was submitted, then it was sent back to us to pick our favorite ones, which were printed in high quality at full scale to be sent to me to evaluate and determine which ones would be the, well, which one would be the winner? Because everyone whose design is in front of me on the table actually gets a copy of the winning design, but only the person who submitted the winning design gets an anodized gold color version of it along with the other two colors of it. So let's, uh, let's get started here and figure out the, the pros and cons of, of each of these different headphone stand designs. All right, so the basic process that I'm gonna be going through is I will be finding all the parts based on the original models submitted on my mini factory. So you can actually check this out. Something that's cool is you guys can actually download these and print them anytime you want off of myminifactory.com if you're, if you're into that sort of thing. So I'll find the original models, assemble all the different pieces that go with them, and then I will be mounting them to this board here and then using a pair of headphones as a quick test to uh, see kind of how, how it is really functionally in the real world. So since I'm holding this one, why don't I start with this one from Wally? -E. Hmm. So pros and cons of Wally's -E design. The split construction means that it's going to be relatively easy to manufacture. So you just build two pieces and then join them with a screw in the middle here making it also very compact to package and ship. The simple, elegant design I actually find quite appealing and I think matches fairly well with the design language that Silverstone is already using on their existing headphone stand product. The one thing that I don't really like about this one is something that's gonna be common with a lot of the other designs and that's that there's no real thought given to where to manage the cord. Something that's less of an issue on a desktop mounted stand where it can sit on the table um, than it is on a wall mounted design where it simply will fall down to the floor. Okay. This is a really nice design. It looks like three or four pieces to construct, so there will be some assembly required. But what I like about this one is the nice gentle arch that holds the headphones. The fact that it has a lip to prevent them from falling off if, you know, I don't know, a neighbor bangs on the wall on the other side or whatever else. You don't want your headphones to come tumbling down. And it has an integrated knob for keeping your cables out of the way. Even the extraordinarily long cable on the HD 650s here was able to be managed. Oh, this is kind of cool actually. There's, uh, I didn't even notice this before, but there is a little holder on the right hand side to actually route the cable cleanly up to the knob as well. So it doesn't just kind of 
hang over the side like that. Very nice. So this design is from Patrick Brower. Okay. So this design from Brian Pearson is a little bit different from the rest of them for a couple of reasons. Number one is points off for not really giving any thought to the mounting mechanism for it. I had to just use double-sided tape and I guess he figured Silverstone would sort that out, which is not entirely unfair, but um, definitely something that's nice to see people consider. Uh, but the other main difference is that Brian's design seems to mostly consider uh, portable headphones, like smaller headphones, like the kinds uh, that you're looking at here. This is a pair of Sennheiser Momentum 2.0s. Now there was some thought given to cable management, but I'm not really a huge fan of the approach because it doesn't really hold it very well. And while I can see that I think this is to hold the connector right here, uh, it gives it a bit of a messy look on the wall. So I would have liked to see a little bit more consideration for that in this design. This next design from Matt Selnick definitely wins points for elegance. I actually really like the shield style wall plate, uh, the support brace here. While not necessary when we're talking hanging headphones off a piece of aluminum, I think looks really good. And it'll be appealing to folks who own both small and larger headphones. But the things that I think are missing in this design are that I'd like to see the wall plate be a little bit bigger. And I would also like to see more thought given to uh, cable management. Yes, a recurring theme, I know. So this design is from, I'm gonna say Yorn? Okay, I tried. Well, either way, there were a couple things that I really liked about it. Number one is it has like kind of a Starship Enterprise-esque look to it. Not quite sure how that happened, but definitely the inner geek in me appreciates it. Number two is clear thought has been given not only to how you can hang small lightweight headphones, looks great by the way, but also large heavier headphones because it gets the holder far enough away from the wall that it's not going to bump against anything. I also do like the fact that it has an integrated cable management system where you can wrap it around the wall plate, but there were a couple of things that didn't appeal to me that much as well. I think the wall plate could have been larger. This would have made cable management a little bit easier and improved the aesthetics. And I think that the support shaft really doesn't look that great with larger headphones on it. So the design could have stood to be a little bit beefier overall, but this one's a really, really solid offering. So this design from Steven Flavin intrigued me more than anything else. And I really, really had to see it in person. Basically, there's a couple of different things going on here, not all of which are apparent when just looking at the 3D model picture. So number one is that with a little popping thing here, you can actually fold it down in the event that you don't feel like storing your headphones on it and you can restore it to its locked status here. And number two is that while it appeared as though this bottom piece could um, be raised in the model, it doesn't actually seem to account for that in the design. So I was kind of thinking it was a double layered design, but if you look at where it lines up, it would be, it would interfere with the top headphones anyway. So while I definitely like the sort of the, the folding down concept here, I think due to manufacturing difficulties as much as anything else, uh, this one's not going to be coming away with the prize, but definitely like the idea. This design from Michael, I actually, I think I liked it a little bit more in the renders. It's got kind of a cool contoury thing going on, very, very artsy. But in terms of practicality, it doesn't have a very broad surface for the top of the headphones to rest on. So it's actually gonna dent the headphone padding there a little bit. Not much thought really given to cable management, but I do like, I do like what Michael was going for here in terms of the look and how it'll look on the wall when it doesn't have headphones on it. In fact, I think I like this one better without the headphones on it, which is a little bit unique. So our next design here is one that I actually really like. This one from Matthew Vidal. A lot of thought given to mounting on this one. So you go ahead and you screw in the rear plate. Then the top piece locks into place from the top. Very simple design, very elegant looking. Headphones go on like so. 
Again, points off for no real thought given to cable management, but I love the simplicity. I love the, uh, the lip at the edge so that the headphones aren't gonna slip off by accident. Love the spacing off the wall just right to have the headphones like sitting right in the middle and not banging up against the wall. Really do, really do like this one from, from Matthew here. All right, so we got Matthew's design here, which is a folding kind of, this looked better in the render, but I'm sure Silverstone would replace that with like their logo or something, but it's a folding design that actually has the benefit of being able to tuck the top piece. It doesn't go all the way in because of the scaffolding of the 3D printing, but you can see here, it would basically go all the way inside when you're not using it, or all you do is slide this piece through, locks into place, and boom, you put your headphones on, just a little something like that. And this is cool too, you can use that space in the top that you can store, uh, that you can store the headphone holder in to hold the cord whenever you're not using it. I actually quite like this one. And finally, our last entry, this one's called Model Circular A, and I really, really like this one. I knew coming into this, this was gonna be the one to beat. This is by Henning Weber. Weber? Well, either way. Basically, the way this puppy works is it's big, and I can see that being a turnoff for some people, but it brings with it a lot of functionality. So there's a slot right here to run your cords through. So you go ahead and just kind of throw your cords into the, into the cable organizer pouch there. Then you can put up to two pairs of headphones on it. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the way the second pair of headphones goes on at the back, but it's nice to at least have the space for it since it is kind of a, a bulkier design. And then you go ahead and you put your second pair of headphones on the front. What I like about how large the, the little cubby here for cables is, is that you can also jam some accessories in there like two and a half mil to three and a half millimeter jack adapters, for example. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in here and we will declare the winner. Well, I think we might as well, I think we might as well declare the winner now. I'm really liking this one. So assuming that Silverstone can find a way to manufacture it, then I'm gonna go with the circular A design right here. And then I think I'm actually going to make my runner up in the event that this cannot be made this puppy right here. So thank you to everyone who participated. Remember, everyone whose design was shown off here today does get a finished copy of the winning design and the winner not only gets black and silver, but also a gold anodized version of their winning design. And I think that's pretty much it, guys. And on that subject, Crunchyroll, the website created by anime fans for anime fans that features all kinds of like Western dramas. Just kidding, it's got lots of anime. So you head over to crunchyroll.com and sign up for a 30 day all you can eat free trial. And if you decide you like it, it starts at only $6.95 a month. And they've got a ton of great features for Crunchyroll Premium, like the ability to watch in 1080p, shows that were just aired in Japan, like within 24 hours, and the ability to stream to a wide variety of devices, including your Roku or game console, in addition to being able to watch on the computer. They've got a ton of great shows, including Raka and Gate, Ushio and Tora, and Monster Masumi, and they're constantly adding more. So head over to crunchyroll.com slash Linus and check it out now, especially if you haven't tried it before, because that 30-day free trial is kind of the bee's knees. If you disliked this video, you know what to do, but if you liked it, please hit that like button. Do get subscribed to Linus Tech Tips, and also consider supporting us, whether it's by buying a cool t-shirt like this one, by changing your Amazon bookmarks, one with our affiliate code, links up there, or even by supporting us directly through our community forum. I think that pretty much wraps it up. Don't forget to uh, check out, oh yeah, we have other videos, right? So uh, let's see, what have we done recently? I'm sure, oh yeah, if you've been wondering, which is better, the 5820K or the 6700K for your new gaming rig? We just did a head-to-head -head comparison that you can check out out there. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.